Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Make sure you hit the like button, leave comments so I know what you think of the interview. And most importantly, please, please subscribe to the channel so I get these great interviews. You know why I have coming up in a few seconds. Uh, before we do that, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Duff Beer. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! And please, like I said, subscribe to the channel or my guest is going to kick your butt. Anyway, without further ado, I bring to you, here's Mr. Scary, George Lynch. How you doing, George? Good. Uh, let me get rid of this thing that's in front. It's asking me if it's okay for me not to sue you for recording my name and likeness or some shit. I don't know. Oh, well, you really are George Lynch, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, no, there's a lot of fake ones out there. You got to be careful. Yeah, I know. I hear you. <laughs> oh, a good quick bit. question before we get into I don't want to forget this. A friend of mine um, mentioned to me that you're very proud uh, Pueblo Native American, which, you know, and, I, and my friend um, Gerald told me to ask you something. I just noticed that you did the 2022 um what the hell is it rock cruise where all the proceeds went to um is it south dakota reservation yeah pine ridge uh uh i'm not sure what charity it was but you know they do good work they 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 actually take truckloads of actual you know food and, and clothing and fuel and, and things that people need and uh and, and most people live in, in in pine ridge are living a brutal existence and uh, you know uh, everything's been stolen from them uh, and continues to be it's not just an old story it's a continuing story yeah. uh, there's a lot I don't want to get into the weeds you know I probably should but it doesn't matter with you know we're having a rock and roll interview here but um, you know it's a very sad situation that the, the uh, original Americans are basically uh, you know the lowest on the rung on every scale and every metric you could imagine in this country and that's actually true for indigenous people all around the world. I was just going to say, and, Canada uh, has a, we have a big indigenous population. A lot of my yeah. brothers and sisters and friends where I live, right on the border with um, Michigan, actually. Um, and, and my friend Gerald's a, um, a, a native Canadian. And so, yeah, he asked me to just bring that up. And he said he's uh, he's known that you're a very big proponent for your, um, your heritage and everything. So I, he said hi, too. <laughs> so hi. Yeah, I, I worked on a documentary called Shadow Nation, and I had a band called Shadow Train. It was all Indigenous uh, musicians, and and we toured and traveled uh, and, and created this documentary out of love and from our hearts and on a shoestring. And uh, um, and it was all those issues, you know, that that we're just talking about, and then some. And it's just very painful to deal with, you know, because you almost feel impotent, like what can you do you know uh, at the end of the day um i think we spent a total we raised money and we spent i think uh, somewhere close to one hundred fifty thousand dollars, which for a yeah. film isn't very much money but to a poor person on pine ridge it's a fortune <laughs> and yeah. i thought after i made the film because i have no business making a film i don't know how to make films and i found that out in during the process of course i had no business making it i felt bad for the people that had invested money and, and not invested but uh, donated money and so forth and and we all donated our time and everything and, and for for quite a while and, and finally got it done and thought man should i just taken that money and gone and helped a family it's hard to say but i mean i was listening to an interview by dr gabor mate last night and he said something um to the to the to the lines of what you're kind of alluding to um we we try to help and we see the big picture that maybe our we we can't enjoy the helping part, but don't bank on the end result because you might not get it, but your karma for putting in is what it's all about. I mean, nobody can change the world by protesting, you know, standing up with a flag, but yeah. if you do that, you've done your part, and you're, the collective is is when it does change, it's because of these people like yourself who invest your, some of your own money and, and do this on your own time. So, I mean, um, whatever you did, it would have been, it's, it's the proper thing to do. I mean, that's my opinion. 
Well, doing a good thing is better than doing nothing. And I th think nothing is just the same as doing That's right. something wrong, something evil. Yeah. Because inaction is, is an action. And so I agree with you in that sense, but uh, being smart about where we place limited resources towards changing policy is important. Uh, I don't think that we can say it's not. Uh, it's just that um, I met, I probably made a bad decision and learned that lesson and it's a painful lesson and there's no, you know, going forward, I'm like, really, what what is it really about? What What is the one thing that uh, I, I wish I could do that would change things? And I say, if, if, if we distill everything down to that simple of a, of a question, I think the answer is change policy. Right. Change, change government policy towards indigenous people. That's the one thing I would focus, 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 focus on, because that's really the source of all the problems. For instance, how can you have an investment on a, a let's say, a, on Pueblo land or, or, or more importantly, reservation land, which is two different things, um, when it's land held in trust by the government? So basically, Native Americans are wards of the state, similar to what, how they are treated in Canada. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a technical thing. But they're called sovereign nations, but they're, it's limited sovereignty because they really don't have actual real control over the only things that matter on, on the most fundamental level, which is resources. Because resources right. are what all wars are fought for, and what you know, <laughs> that's it's it's that's the it's the uh, it's the foundation of everything that our economy is built on is our resources, and that's that's the his, that's for all animals through the history of time. So. Uh, if you don't control your uranium, your minerals, your timber, your water, your land, uh, what do you really have? How is that sovereign? Um, so in Pine Ridge, for instance, the little bit of land that the natives still have, the 2% out of the 100% that they originally had, uh, most of that after the Dawes Act has been subdivided and sold off. And what's left is they're is so poverty stricken and have so little power that they're almost forced to lease the land that they have either to oil extraction, shale, for grazing, to the, to the white ranchers that live on the perimeter of their reservations. So they can't even use their own land to their own benefit. Um, yeah. And there's no investment. How are you going to get investment when your investment is not guaranteed because of the nature of the structure of an Indian reservation and, and, and the interface with the government through the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Department of Interior makes, ensures that you will not, there will be no outside investments to benefit the people that live there yeah um and it's that's sad that's why we do we cross a border in the indian reservation just about anywhere in the united states other than casinos uh uh it's it's just desperation you know and and lowest life expectancy highest infant mortality uh highest unemployment you know uh, you don't live very long everybody has diabetes you know high, it, high addiction rates too due to the oh, issues oh. that they face right uh, due to just uh, you know they've given up i mean you know it's it's just such a miserable thing you know when your culture and all your resources are stolen from you, your whole history and so it's generational trauma passed on from generation to generation it's yeah. just it's just it, and, and when you deal with the problem it just becomes overwhelmingly depressing <laughs> I was just gonna say that, what, yeah. what the fuck can i do you know yeah. uh you know i mean i'm just like a voice in the wind and in, in the wilderness you know and uh, there are other voices but aligned against you know the american government or the canadian government or western forces or the banking yeah, system we, we, we don't have a government anymore uh george just letting you know <laughs> in canada we don't oh. have a government oh well yeah you don't? It's pretty, it's pretty bad. that Trudeau guy right yeah pretty you bad. can't swear in the show i'm just joking <laughs> oh oh i i don't know i yeah, uh, he's uh, yeah, he's not very. I, I don't like, know much. I don't know much about Canadian politics, but uh, I thought he was uh, somewhat liberal, so I, I think I, I liked him to a certain extent. Well, Although that's, he, the, that's the letters he stands by. But anyways, let's get on to some happy stuff. <laughs> uh, Babylon was released. Uh, I was it twenty third. Was that the release party? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's out now. Um, I've heard erase and um, caught up. Love the tunes. Um, I'm going to put links below, guys, because I'm going to talk to George about a couple different things here. But the new album's great. I have uh, listened to it. 
It's definitely uh, George Lynch and Lynch Mob sounding, but I mean, they got some great new songs on there. Um, you're going to be touring next year. You have one show left this year, I think, right? 28th or something? Um, you- well, we're really looking at the 28th and the 29th or whatever the New Year's Eve show as a, as the beginning of our new new touring season. We're, we don't have much going on in uh, November and December. I had one show yeah. last week. Vegas with Dawkin, and then I've got a show with uh, uh, Chris Angel uh, on the 18th of December in Vegas. Uh, just me with other guests. Is that, not was he that magician? Yes. Oh, is it? Yeah. No. I, I, I'm, you know, I met him at a show. He came to a, one of our Vegas shows, and uh, and we started talking and uh, became friends. And uh, are you freaking talking about the magician? I was being sarcastic. Yeah. No, Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make yeah, this part so, disappear. Yeah, no, no. It's a it's a benefit for uh uh children cancer fund because his, his oh, son man. had cancer and beat it and uh he's dedicated his life to making sure hopefully that doesn't have you know happens to as few people as possible going forward. Yeah. Um because he doesn't want that for any you know, wish that on anyone. And um so I'm uh, happy to be a part of that uh, coming up at his theater on the 18th in Vegas. And then, as you mentioned, after Christmas, uh, Lynch Mob takes off again. Uh, we're going to go into rehearsals for a little bit, and then we're going to start uh, doing shows at the end of uh, December and, and on into next year. And we're going to tour uh, heavily uh, through. Uh, so that'll be your 30th anniversary, right? Tour? I think it's more than that. 35th, sorry. sorry. I meant to say 35. Yeah, uh, close to it. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, but isn't that the name of the tour? <laughs> 35th anniversary? Oh, I don't think. No, no. It's called The Final Ride. Okay. Well, anyways, I've got a question here. I'm going to get my questions uh, for some viewers, okay? Is that right? Sure. Okay, so Butter Ovaltine. Oh, wait. That's not that. That's a fucking grocery list. Um. <laughs> Actually, this, <laughs> is it Dennis that Sanchez? Like a, a grocery list from the '60s. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As uh, so Dennis Sanchez, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't uh, write his name just D Sanchez because we don't want to know what that means. But he asked me to ask you: Will Ani Logan play um, come in um, at any point in that uh, your last uh, tour? Uh, well, I. You know, it's possible that he could show up and 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 uh, and hop on stage. You know, okay. but nothing's planned, and I have no idea. Okay, well, he's a big fan of yours, obviously, and uh, Ani's. And then there's another question here. Um, actually, this is my my question. Um, when I when you think of horns in hard rock music, what do you think? Right? Do you think of these? You know, right? Instead of the tangled in the web. Yeah. I got to ask you, man, that is such a great song and the horns fit perfectly. Who who was it that, who, who came up with that idea? Was it enge- an, an en- engineer? Was it you? It wasn't me. No, it was Keith Olsen, the producer. And when and he a, said, when he suggested that, what, did, what was your initial thoughts? Well, when you have a high caliber producer like that, that you're paying a lot of money for. <laughs> okay, I get it. And defer to whatever their inclinations and suggestions are because that's what they're being paid to do. And that's why you have them. So uh, you put your own personal aspirations and, and considerations aside or be, not aside completely, but behind his, because he's the one driving the ship. And uh, so that was really his Keith Olson's record. You know? So basically though, you're kind of insinuating what I would insinuate is that when he suggests it, you're like, Oh, boy, yeah, we're paying him big money, but he's got a good uh, reputation, so let's go with it. And then when you heard the final um, recording or mix, um, were you were you kind of surprised at how good it just re- reacted into your into your guitar riff? Well, I, I got to be honest with you. I've done so many records. I'm never sh- I never, I don't value my own opinion very highly. Um. Because I don't really know, uh, you know, you, the, you're so close to your music and you're so inside of it, you can't, you don't really have a good objective view, you know, a 10 mile overhead Eagles view of what it is. 
you need you need some distance and some time to sort of really get a sense of what you did, what you created. So with that record, um, you know, in hindsight, we made absolutely the opposite record that we should have made. We should have stuck with Oni and we should have had a greasy, bluesy, hard rock album. Uh, we should have stepped, stuck with the same formula we, we had with the first record. Um, but we consciously decided to make a more Dokkanish, backed off. Hang on, the you think? And we got it. We got a producer that to to make sure that that happened, and that's what Keith Olson brought, and that's what we ended up with. And we all thought it was great, sort of, until we till it flopped. <laughs> we, thought, and we were looking around. Maybe and it to flopped blame. in sales, but you're talking. We're talking about the '92 album, right? It sold half of what the first one sold. Yeah. So yeah, but went, I mean, I I think it's my favorite actually. Just it's well, opinions, people right? People liked it, you know. But I mean, uh, of course, uh, it was just. Considering where the world was going musically, and we had blinders on, we didn't see it. Uh, the worst thing you could have done was do that. In retrospect, in hindsight, obviously, you know, grunge was coming. All the trappings of the '80s were going away, and and uh, we we went in, we doubled down on the wrong thing, you know. So and we got spanked pretty hard for it. Yeah. So we sold half the records with the with the, with Lynch Mob Two that we did with Wicked Sensation. And that was probably just, we probably sold those records based on the momentum of the first record and the expectations that we, uh, you know, people were expecting from after the, after the Wicked record. Like, oh man, killer. And then it was like, well, what's this horns bullshit? <laughs> oh, I, I love them, man. Like, There's a guy in Canada that'll like it. Pardon? There's a guy in Canada that'll like it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people that like it actually. Um, yeah. There's a band, um, I don't know if you're in Cali right now, but um, the yep. band out there, well, I don't know if they're still playing. They're called the Mad Caddies, and they're like a ska band. And they have horns all through their stuff. Yeah, well, you know, like madness, one step beyond. <laughs> all that stuff. No, no, I get it. It just uh, has its place because I'm a, I'm a hard rocker, like a maiden, triumph, Def Leppard, Lynch Mob. You know what I mean? I like that stuff. I'm not into um, jazz, although Brian Setzer is amazing. But I mean, I don't get into anything other than hard rock, really. And I, when those horns came in, I thought, "Wow, that just fit." Anyways, let's get off the horns, man. <laughs> you know, I played in a band. I had a project called Project Infidelica uh, uh, with the singer from Fishbone and bass player from War, and we toured and uh, did a record kind of a, a live in the studio R&B-ish crazy bizarre record. <laughs> I don't know what you'd even call it. It was a super fun record to make. And we had horns all over that because Angela Moore, the, the singer, played multiple horns. Uh, played uh, different three different saxes and this and that, mostly sax. And it was awesome, especially in a live context because we would, we would, uh, we would kind of go back and forth and do call and response stuff. Oh, right on. Other and I had never done that in my life. I was like, fuck, this is cool. <laughs> so yeah. um the guitars, who are you sell are you selling your guitars to um obviously other guitar players? That was kind of weird the way I brought that up. Um, but I mean, what's the demand for your are you like once you're off the not on the road, are you uh are you in the um in the workshop making these guitars because you have so many orders coming in, or are you just picking who you're gonna build them for uh no it's no it's not really that cut and dry simple uh i have inquiries i get inquiries and then uh most of them don't pan out because either something will be way too above my pay grade for me to pull off you know i'll get people that ask me to do crazy things i want a dragon that breathes fire with flaming led eyeballs and all sculptured with i'm like ah, i can't i don't do that or uh you know, I want to, you know, they want a neck through body, this and that, or the, like an alembic kind of guitar with all this kind of, I was like, I don't do that. So uh, I get a lot of requests, but um, uh, but what I do is I is I have certain models, certain things I've that have kind of turned into models at all the 12 years I've been doing this that uh, you can order. And if you order that, uh, we can customize it. I'll customize it, you know, within reason. And then um, 
uh, and then beyond that, what I'm really trying to do more of is is what I call spec guitars. And that's where I just go to my shop and I just do whatever the hell I want. And then I put it up for sale. Um, so, for instance, let's see. I have a guitar here right now that I just finished. Hold on. Oh, interview's over. George just left. No, no, no. I'm getting this guitar for you. Oh, you're getting it for me. Thanks, man. I'll give you my mailing address later. Well, as long as you give me your credit card number, too, then sure. Yeah, well, good uh, luck on that one. Send the, send the guitar <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah, so this is... I call well, it the higher, George. I might use it as a thumbnail. Do um, what? Now? Okay, hold it up a bit higher. Yeah, I might cut that out and use that as the thumbnails for the um for the interview. That's great. That's beautiful. Yeah, man. So yeah, it's got uh, uh my Mister Distress, Mister Scary pickup in it that uh, uh Rob at Arcane Wines for me. Uh, we developed this thirteen seven uh, K Alnico magneted uh, monster everybody loves it uh distressed german floyd uh that's a lawler p90 that, that uh, lawler made for me custom made uh it's a brazilian rosewood neck uh locking shower tuners um and then uh a brass uh, block on the back and the mr scary neck bolt plate and uh with the, the uh so what would one of those go for i've got like a 500 dollar limit on my card <laughs> well that'll get you a very weak deposit would it, would it get me a couple of frets yeah that'll that that probably pick the case oh get the case <laughs> i'm just kidding um i won't keep you longer george i know you got one more uh interview at least today and you've been doing them all morning um quick question what's the opposite of unsubscribe Uh, the opposite of unsubscribe was subscribe. Yeah, do as George says. As I said earlier, if you don't subscribe to the channel, he's going to kick your ass. Um, isn't that right, George? Well, yeah, yeah. You, 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 that's pretty scary when you threaten that some 70-year-old guitar player is going to come up from California and kick your ass. And it just scares a lot of people when they hear that. Well, that's why I'm saying it, boot. because they're going to subscribe. Very you know, scary. Uh, you know what's scarier? If you threaten me that I'll come to their house and play them songs, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think you have any problem with people opening no. the doors. And uh, doors will in. come to your house and play Stairway to Heaven very badly. Oh, man. And bring and Jimmy Page with leave. him. Or not Jimmy, bring Robert Plant, because I think he just sang it for the first time in 18 years. Did you hear about that? No. Yeah, because I don't think it's true either. But um so everybody get the album Babylon. You can get it on Spotify, um, all the streaming platforms. I'll leave the links below to George's website. Um, just check out, buy all their merch, everything you need to do. I don't want to forget. Oh, favorite Canadian uh, band, guitarist, or artist? Uh, Norm MacDonald. Is he Canadian? Like, I know my Canadians, but. Oh, my God, yes. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I, I didn't know Normie from Saturday Night Live was Canadian. Oh, my God. Come on. He's the most Canadian person I've ever known. Is that right? Remember I, like, oh, remember I told you I wasn't going to ask anything about Don? Well, I guess. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to give you the first interview probably in about 20,000 that nobody's asked you a question about Don. How's that? I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Hey, anytime. So you enjoyed yourself this afternoon, George? Yeah, it was great, man. Thank you so much. I'm really always happy to connect with people, our more sane neighbors up to the north of us. And uh, maybe, maybe I'll come live with you guys someday. I don't know. All right, man. Well, when you guys are routing that tour, try to try to get a couple Canadian dates and you'll make a lot of people up here happy. Yeah. Moose Jaw, Saskatoon. Yeah, those are those are our two cities. Red Deer. There's the third. See? I know I know my Canada. Yeah, we got uh we got a few provinces, Toronto and Montreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> British right. Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Quebec, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, Hudson Bay, Northwest did you, Territory. Did you say Finland? No, I said Newfoundland. 
Oh, I thought you said Finland. I was saying George. No, oh. Newfoundland. Yeah. Okay. I know more about Canada than you do. You didn't even you know. Norm. I didn't even know Norm McDonald was Canadian. Sorry, Norm. God, come on. All right. Thanks, George. Yeah. Anyways, buddy, thank you. Had, a, had fun, and uh, we'll talk again soon, I hope. Yeah. Bye-bye.